everybody and welcome back to the Moshex mainframe channel. This is Moshex. When you think mainframe, one of the first or second thought that comes right after that is Kix or CICS as some people call it. And in fact, uh, very often Kix is associated with ZOS or the MVS uh, predecessor operating system and to some smaller extent also with uh, VSE. And even this wiki page here, if you look at it, says that um, has mostly correct information it says that it is now a 52 year old um, transaction server we call this today we'll, be, we'll call it transaction server back in the 70s it was called a transaction monitor uh, monitor back in the day stood for almost for operating system remember not for for a screen um, and so it came up in the in the 60s as a way to let uh, screens or terminals uh, interact with uh, with applications and defined back then already a standard API or application programming interface for various programming languages starting first with assembler then COBOL RPG PL1 later on Java C and other languages and this wiki page here describes it uh, correctly it's called customer information control system and um, it's been around uh, for 52 years as we've seen it's still being marketed very very actively by IBM to this date so um, there's still new releases coming out all the time however there's a slight uh, inaccuracy in this page here and that it says here it's uh, it, it's to it's for ZOS and ZVSC which is true for today however uh, it also existed for several other platforms including OS2 the venerable IBM uh, operating system for the uh, personal computer it existed even for uh, Windows for a short time and uh, it existed for um, uh, other platforms such as AIX and it also importantly existed for VM and if you go here there's an announcement uh, IBM made in 1987 and actually I remember this announcement uh, the world was shocked when IBM came out and said that they were going to release let me make this a little bigger um, IBM um, releases CICS or Kix 4 VM is a new member of the Kix family of products uh, of course by then it already um, was already in the making also for the uh, personal computer and other environments but here it is um, IBM announced Kix 4 VM and I'm sure that some of you here the viewers uh, remember seeing Kix 4 VM monthly license charge at the time $1,500 um, per pro and then of course it was also um, price by processor group and available in at the beginning of or mid 1988 release one and first quarter of release two um, transaction processing in the VM uh, environment the normal API that I just mentioned before uh, local and remote data support um, logging back out recovery system application support all those good things and uh, see, see if you look here on the left side of the screen you see here a very typical log on screen that people may even remember recognize from the work at a bank or insurance company or in this case here the Idaho controllers office um, that details how to log in and this would be very typical um, uh, screens that people see when they log in and this would be for the uh, knowledge workers so for people who process bank uh, statements or you know uh, credit cards applications or insurance claims they will log on and process this um, this transactions as they called or uh, processes on kicks and uh, and so uh, it is almost unthinkable to um, to not have a kicks um, uh, environment for our beloved 24-bit uh, uh, operating system systems uh, such as MVS 3.8 which uh, which we have in the public domain and in fact I did make a video um, about four years ago um, where I showed that in fact there is a replacement for Kix in open source called Kix with K uh, K I C K S uh, for MVS 3.8 and back then I made a video on how to obtain it and uh, how to install it how to work with it and um, yeah it's quite a popular video with almost 16,000 views as of today and that's M24 now um, I also pointed already out back then that the author of Kix uh, the person who made this Kix replacement had also um, uh, 
uh, a version that was working on VM, on VM370, the one uh, VM operating system for the mainframe that we can run in the public domain. And uh, however, I never made a video about it. And uh, over the years, uh, interest for this Kix replacement has been growing. And again, I, uh, I just wanna say that it covers most of the API calls, not all of them. Um, obviously, there's no uh, way to call DB2 or no way to call uh, the DL1 database from IBM, but of course it can interact with vSAM. So, um, our beloved professor René Ferland has uh, offered to show us how to get Kix uh, working, uh, the one, the Kix with a K at the beginning, K-I-C-K-S, to work with VM, with our beloved VM370. In the meantime, we also have a new release of VM370, the VM370 Community Edition, about which I've already made a video on this channel as well. And um, and so we will uh, listen today to uh, René Ferland uh, describing to us how to obtain and install and operate Kix VM on VM370. Over to you, René. Thank you. Hello, this is René. And today my video is about Kix, a transaction processing system for CMS and TSO. Now in the past, about four years ago, I believe, uh, Moshix made a video about uh, Kix. It's video M24. In that video, Moshix went on to install Kix on MVS38J and then explore a little bit how to use it uh, under TSO. Now, what I would like to do in this video is explore the same thing, but for VM370. Okay, so <laughs> let's go back here. Uh, there is a user guide you can consult over there. And uh, by the side here, you have a few items regarding the installation. So it's possible to install Kix on ZOS or on legacy MVS, or on ZVM, or legacy CMS. So let's look at legacy CMS. We have a bunch of instructions there. Now, these instructions are slightly outdated because they concern essentially the VM370 as available at the time, which was uh, the six pack one two. Today we have this uh, VM370 Community Edition, so these instructions are slightly outdated. And for example, here he says uh, install the X, uh, the Diagnose 58, you new know, full screen support and stuff like that. But this is already available on VM370 Community Edition. There's also a problem with the COBOL compiler, because at the time on the 6-pack 1.2, the COBOL compiler had a bug and Mike Knoll essentially uh, uh, wrote some kind of a workaround uh, for this bug. <coughs> and since then, on VM370 Community Edition, the bug has been removed, but that somehow <laughs> caused a problem with that workaround. So you have to adjust a little bit things uh, over there. And there's also another issue with these instructions, because at the time on this uh, six pack one two, well, it's still true today, but there was uh, only one virtual machine for uh, a normal or an ordinary uh, user. That was the CMS user virtual machine. And Mike Noel chose to install Kix on CMS user, which meant that the Minidisc uh, 195 of this the virtual machine would be dedicated to the the, the programs of Kix. And then the Minidisc 194 um, would be dedicated for vSAM data sets. Now, at the time when I wanted to install this myself, uh, about six or eight years ago, I believe, I had a lot of stuff on my uh, CMS user uh, virtual machine and I didn't want to copy this or trying to save this on tape or VM archives or stuff like that. So I said to myself, I'm going to create a separate uh, virtual machine, a Kix virtual machine, and I'm going to store that virtual machine on a separate DASD with a separate DASD also for the vSAM data sets. 
And this way I will have maybe a, a less, let's say, intrusive uh, installation. So I did that and I was successful with it, I believe. I use it a little bit and then it went away. But lately, someone on the discussion groups uh, asked about uh, possibly installing Kicks on VM 370 Community Edition. And of course, these instructions are, are might be difficult for someone who are not familiar with them or <coughs> stuff like that. So I thought at this moment, maybe I could offer my two DASDs, you know, as a quick solution for installing the kicks uh, on VM370 Community Edition. So I did that and it turns out that we discovered this uh, slight problem with the COBOL workaround, but uh, together, you know, we figure it out. So uh, I would like in this video essentially show you what you can do to use these two uh, DASDs of mine, you know, uh, to install kicks uh, quickly because because uh, essentially, since uh, Kix is already installed in that virtual machine on the separate DASD, now instead of going through all these instructions that you have here on the, on the screen, what you can do is simply add two DASDs to uh, the VM370 Community Edition, then make these two DASDs known to the system, add a directory m3 for the kix virtual machine and essentially that's it you will have kix available on the system okay so let's uh, <coughs> do that together it shouldn't be very hard so first thing you go to my jurassic park over here uh, there is a tab for vm370 choose it and then go down a little bit and then you have this Kix uh, quick install kit over there. It's inside a zip. So download that zip. It will contain the, as I say here, the two DASDs, the directory entry and actually some documents. In fact, there is an install manual too and uh, some information about Kix in this uh, zip though. So let's assume that you have that. Uh, we should mask disk you will end up you know with this zip over there and this here is essentially a freshly download the vm370 community edition so we're gonna install kicks uh, right away in this so first of all we unzip this and we take this and put it inside that folder then <coughs> this i don't need but we go here that's uh, uh, a shell window. First of all, I'm going to go to this uh, folder there. Now, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, now There is this kicks uh, folder. That's fine. So first thing we have to do is to update the directory. Uh, not the directory, but the uh, Hercules configuration file to add the two DASDs to the system. So I'm going to do that, VM370 configuration, right there. And now I'm going to install them over there. You know, uh, you have to choose the address you want to, to essentially add the, the DASD. Maybe you can also add a, a shadow file if you want. But I'm just going to add them, you know, after these, uh, these two here. The first one is for the CMS user ID and the other one is a, <coughs> a, uh, an empty DASD for a further virtual machine. So just after that, I'm going to put this, uh, these two DASDs of Kix. So let me read, uh, I believe it's Kix configuration like this. So these two packs are for Kix version 1 release 5M0. So that's 06B2, 06B3. Now at this point, I should be able to just start Hercules on this updated configuration file. Uh, let's see what happens. As soon as this is finished, you know, it's always good to start the unit record devices. And then let's check uh, if the DASDs are there. 
Yes, they are. So kicks zero is the DASD containing the kicks virtual machine, and that VSAM in here is the the OS formatted DASD that will contain the VSAM data sets of the of the system. Uh, next thing we have to do uh, to update the directory and also make these uh, DASDs here known to the system so we have to attach them to the system you know they cannot be free now in the six pack one two at the time if a virtual machine use mini disk uh, and the DASDs containing the mini disk were free it would be automatically attached to the system uh, as soon as the virtual machine started log on you know but that apparently is not a standard uh, behavior for VM anyway. So in this uh, VM 370 Community Edition, it's no longer true that the DASD will be automatically attached to the system. So we have to uh, do something about that. So uh, let me <coughs> start another window like this. We're going to go to Maint, of course like this, CPCMS, good, uh, and we need to uh, update the directory, so I already uh, added a, a, a file in the Kix folder for that, so let's uh, read it, you know, C, Kix, like this. So that should give me a file, so I'm going to read the here, over there. Let's say kicks uh, direct A. Now I'm going to copy the, the directory, the system directory. Let's say to something which my name. I usually do that to avoid uh, changing the one that is distributed. And then I'm going to edit this one. I go to the, the end, and then I get uh, kicks direct. I save this, and I quit, and then I update the directory. So now, uh, the virtual machine has been defined, so I will be able to log on soon, but we have to uh, attach the uh, as these to the system. So now there are two ways to do this. So if you want DAS these to be attached to the system at IPL, either you change the uh, CP nucleus for that, or you change the profile exec of Autolog 1. So I'm going to use the, the latter, but you can change the uh, CP nucleus if you wish. So to change the profile exec, we need to first uh, link the mini disk on which it is located. So that would be link to log 191397MR. Then let's access this on Z and then edit this profile exec Z. Now, uh, as it is, I find this uh, exec to be a little bit uh, complicated for nothing, but uh, I will not change it. As you can see, if I ride the, the, the devices several times and then drain things and enable all and drain thing again, so there's, in my opinion, too many instructions for nothing, but still let's leave it this way. What we have to do here, for example, is to add these two, two instructions. Uh, we're going to attach 6B2 to system as a kicks 0. And we're going to attach the other one 6B3 to system as a, that was Visam in. I don't remember why I called this uh, there's the Visam in, but anyway, let's use it. All right, so now I don't need this anymore, so I just release Z and detach. Then I log off. And now I need to 
again to re-IPL this thing. So let's shut down. Oh. Stop, quit, and let's start it again. Okay, so we can see that the two DASDs have been attached, so that's good news. Let me start again the unit record devices. So at this point, we should be able to uh, log on to the Kix virtual machine. So let's go there. Log on Kix, Kix, whoops. Okay, it works fine. So this DASD is detached. Okay, so that's normal because the, the program will attach it as needed. Okay, so if you want to run kicks, you just type kicks return and that will start kicks like this. So here it is. Uh, to continue, you have to clear. At this point, you have this, uh, <coughs> well, not blank, but black uh, screen. Normally, we type the name of a transaction uh, in the upper left corner and a transaction as always it's always four letters so for what i know so there are a few transactions which are which comes which are supplied like they say so they come with the system one is k e m t that's the equivalent of c e m t on on c i c s i believe so that's the master terminal program or on on this uh, implementation, it's a rather more uh, simple uh, transaction, if I'm right. Uh, there is another one. Well, if you want to type another one, you have to clear this first. And then there is KEDF. That's to toggle uh, on or off uh, the debug mode. You know? But I'm not going to do that, so let's clear this clear this and uh, if you want to quit it's KSSF but I'm not gonna quit uh, immediately because Kix comes with two uh, demonstration transactions so the first one is BTC0 if you start this it's gonna give you this that's so it's a it's a transaction to handle accounts and contribution at the Nevada Department of Labor. Actually, it's not really the Nevada Department of Labor, but it's just an adaptation of a, and a real uh, transaction existing, apparently. So it's documented on the, on the site of Mike Noel, you know. So you can explore this if you wish, just to see a little bit how it goes. Uh, let's do... PF12. Then there's another one, so I have to clear. There's another one called Menu. Now this one comes from a book, so let me show you. This book, actually. So if you look at page... Uh, so they explain here how to develop transactions on CICS uh, with COBOL. Okay, and uh, if you go to the page, uh, this page, there is a an example of a transaction, you know, that they had developed uh, all along to illustrate essentially how to do it. And uh, this transaction, as you can see, it is here, menu, and it calls these other guys. And you have essentially these uh, four transactions, menu, inquiry one, MNT two, and ORD one. So if you, let's say, you select one here, so this one is the master menu. You can see the name of the transaction here in the upper right corner. If I choose one, uh, I will have the INQ1, as you can see, transaction. And then if I choose two, that's MN2, described over here. And if I choose three, of course, it's going to be ORD1. All right, so that's what it is. Uh, let's press enter to continue. So if you want to understand a little bit more about these transactions, you can read that book. Uh, the PDF is available on the internet. So if you look uh, 
with Google, you should be able to find it. This is the PDF. Personally, I bought the, the paper version of this and I paid for it, so I feel pretty uh, at ease to have the to download the PDF. But anyway, you'll decide what to do. So that's uh, one thing uh, you can do. PF12 to quit here. And if I want to quit, uh, I do KSSF. And that's going to shut down the kick. So let me hide this maybe. Now, uh, these transactions, these demonstration transactions, they use uh, VSAM data sets. They essentially, they are there to capture some information, update uh, the records of a VSAM data sets, or display the records of a VSAM data sets. That's the kind of a thing that a transaction does uh, in many cases. So these data sets are already on the VSAM disk, you know. And if you want to look at them, you you, you can examine them with the, the AMS serve uh, command. Uh, <coughs> these uh, these VSAM data sets are already, well, they will be allocated, I believe, by uh, Kix. If we look at the LBL like this, we can see all the... Uh, the allocation, essentially, remember VSAM on CMS, uh, the implementation is the one by uh, DOS, not the one of OS. So it means that when you want to allocate, you know, a uh, VSAM data set, you don't need a, a file def. For you. What you need is a DLBL or data set label. That's uh, the equivalent on DOS of a of a DD name, if you wish. So you can see that the IJSysCT, that's the system catalog, and these uh, these other uh, data sets are there, like the Murak invo uh, customer and in invoice control or something like that. So these are all the, the, um, the labels of these VSAM data sets. So <laughs> that's fine. Maybe at this point we may ask ourselves, uh, how can I add uh, a transaction to the system well a transaction typically well in a very simple case it will be uh, composed of a program and a physical map what I call a physical map the physical map is a program usually an assembler program that controls the uh, IO on the panel so when you have a panel like this let me call this again Uh, clear. Let's say menu. This is a panel and you can uh, enter. There are information available. There are fields where you can enter information. There are PFKs programs. So uh, all the IO on such a panel is handled by a program which I call the physical map. It's written in assembler and you have to typically uh, uh, write a, an assembler program for it, but it uses macros, you know, specific macros that describe what is called a map source. And then you need a command to uh, create the assembler program from the map source, assemble the program, store it in the tables of the system and store and create also what is called, the, what I call the symbolic map or maps, these are the, the variable descriptions, you know, the variables, uh, definitions that you're going to use in the program that implements the transaction, because it's not only uh, <coughs> necessary to perform I.O., of course, on a panel, but you need also another program behind that's going to take the information or display, uh, ask the, the map to display information and handle the information, probably uh, reading VSAM data set and stuff like that. So you also need a transaction and you need to compile this uh, transaction. It can be written with Kix uh, on CMS. It can be written in COBOL or in C, if you wish. And then uh, once you have created the physical map and assemble it, and you have created your transaction and compiled it and store this thing uh, at the proper place, you also need to update tables because uh, Kix will use tables like uh, CICS. These tables uh, contains information on which files are used by the transactions, 
what are the transactions available to the system and what are the programs that are used by these uh, transactions. So there are essentially many tables, I believe. I'm not an expert, though, but there are three tables very uh, important. That's the FCT, the PCT, and the PPT. FCT is the file control table, so it contains the description of the files used by the transaction. PCT is the program control table that uh, contains the descriptions of the transactions available. And PPT is the processing program table that lists the, uh, the different programs used by the transaction. Because a, a specific transaction can possibly use many programs, okay? So you have to, there is not a perfectly uh, one-to-one -one map between a transaction and programs. So let me go there. So let me illustrate uh, how to do this on a small example, okay? So that might be uh, useful. Uh, okay, so <coughs> the, uh, the maps, uh, there is a command for that. So you have to create a source file and then you have to apply a, a specific command to assemble and do everything with this uh, map source. And the command is kick mg, like this. So as you can see, this is an exec to compile a, a BMS map for kicks for CMS, okay? And it produces a binary map and a symbolic map for COBOL and GCC. So essentially, it's going to take this uh, bunch of macros, create the assembler, assemble it, store it at the right place, you know, in this uh, text lib over here. And it will also create the symbolic maps, both for COBOL and GCC, whether the, the language you're going to use. Okay, so <clears throat> that's it. And then there is also the command kick uh, cob cl, so that kicks COBOL compile and link. So that's to compile and see COBOL programs for transactions, essentially. Okay. And there is also kick GCC CL. It does the same thing, but with the C essentially. And finally, there is this program kick table to um, update the tables. Okay, so let me do uh, this whole thing. It's not that difficult for a simple transaction. And uh, let me illustrate this with this <coughs> a simple. Uh, spreadsheet transaction okay this was uh, this is available on the uh, github of someone somebody called uh, or named uh, tom chandler and he's the one who asked about the uh, kicks on vm370 anyway so if we go on the github of tom now the github is t chandler 48 because there are apparently many tom chandler <laughs> on the on GitHub, so there are some stuff here. As you can see, there is a CMS basic and a CMS pilot, uh, and there is a spreadsheet application uh, directly implemented. But there is this KKX here. Okay, so let's go there. Let's uh, copy this, I guess. Mm. Uh, H. Then maybe here. Uh, where am I? The right place. So let's go to kicks and let's uh, clone this. All right, so inside this, you can see there is this uh, KKMSD map source. So that's the source of the uh, binary map or the uh, the physical map what i called and the transaction itself is a c program in that file okay so we're going to transfer this on the kix virtual machine and we're going to install this okay so let me exit this first i don't think i need it first of all we're going to transfer uh, uh sorry the physical map Uh, all right there, so let's read it. KKMSD map source A. All right. 
Now, um, <clears throat> if I do a zero over here, you can see that there is this kick co user maclib, kick gc user maclib. These are the maclib, the macro libraries where the symbolic maps will be uh, stored, and the um, the uh, the map itself, the the object module of the map will be stored in kick urpl text lib. So if I look at it, let me check map uh, kick uh, urpl. For the moment, there is only one entry. This is a dummy entry, actually, because if you want to create a text lib on CMS, you cannot do it without <coughs> uh, adding one, uh, at least one element in it. So you cannot create an empty text lib. There must be at least one element into it. So Mike Noel just created this uh, dummy entry here so that it exists there so it's going to be added uh, the the physical map is going to be added to this uh, text lib okay so let's do that let's do k k m uh, no not k k kick m g k k m s d right we have this report card very complete so as you can see it generated the uh, the assemble uh, the assembler program proceed to assemble it then store it into this uh, uh, text lib and then created the symbolic map in cobol and stored it into kick uh, co user created a symbolic map in c and catalog it or store it into this kick uh, gc user and everything went fine because the return codes are zero so if you have problems along the way, the return code will be different than zero. Okay, so that's about it. And if I look now at the, the can I do I still have this? I don't think so. Huh? So let's do txt lib map kick urpl term. Now you can see that kkmsd has been added to this uh, text lib. Uh, the same thing should be true for, uh, let's say, maclib, map, uh, that kgc usr. And now there is this uh, symbolic map into the maclib over here. So that's good. Now we need to uh, transfer the program itself. So let's do that. 00c. Uh, kicks. All right, so read card KKPGM CA. It's a uh, quite a big program. Oh, 3000 lines basically. Uh, before now, it's a C program, so uh, we need to link a mini disk of GCC because it lacks some some uh, some files for the compilation. So let's link this. I don't think you need to do it for uh, COBOL, but for GCC you need to do that. Uh, one uh, no, that's one five nine one. Let's access um, five nine one on Z. And now we can call this thing. Uh, GCCCL KPGM. Of course, you have to compile the map before the transaction because the transaction is going to use the symbolic map. So you need that symbolic map to be available. So typically, you will compile or assemble the the map before you compile the transaction itself. Okay, so it went fine. Uh, that's okay, so everything's fine. Now the the uh, transaction should be inside the kick uh, URPL term. Mm -hmm. Now the transaction is there, KKPGM. Uh, that's the program that implements the transaction. Now uh, what I want to do is uh, <coughs> update the tables. Okay, so where are they? So now on a, on a real if I'm right, on a real CICS, uh, the tables can be updated 
by CICS itself using transactions. So you start, you work under CICS, you, you add your, your stuff and then you update the tables uh, with transactions. But with this kicks, you know, you, you can't do that. You have to update the tables before you start uh, kicks because the tables are static, if you wish, into uh, the system. So each time you have to update the tables, you have to do stop kicks, do whatever is necessary to update the tables for the new transactions and the new maps and the new stuff that you add to the system, and then you restart kicks. But it's not very long to restart kicks. Now, where are the tables? Uh, they are on the mini disk K. So if I do this uh, mouse, I believe here they are. So you have many of them. Uh, you can see here the FCT, the PCT, the PPT. There is also the SIT, the, the DCT. But we are mainly interested by FCT. PCT and PPT. There are three, uh, uh, three uh, members or three possible. You know, with the suffix uh, B star, uh, B dollar, S dollar, or one dollar. We're gonna use uh, one dollar, and I believe you can create more if you wish, two dollar, three dollars, and stuff like that. Uh, but you just have to specify the the command, the kick table about that, and you can also specify. Uh, these tables when you start uh, kicks actually so if you look at the documentation of kicks you know uh, you see that uh, there are options you can specify and in particular you can specify which tables you're going to use so it means that uh, essentially you can store i guess uh, different trans a bunch of transactions and files and so on in one series of tables and for another bunch of transactions or another system you can use another set of tables and start kicks with one or the other uh, according uh, to your choice you know so let's update uh, ppt one dollar so we're gonna do kick uh, ppt one dollar assemble k uh, as you can see, there are many entries already. Uh, we should see uh, see these uh, kick PPT type entry here. TAC, that's the uh, the transaction for the Nevada Department of Labor. And later on, you're gonna see uh, these guys here from the the Merak book. Okay, there are many of them. And then there are even some test programs and stuff like that. So maybe just before the end, we can add our two, our two entries over here. Uh, three, maybe. Uh, okay, so kick PPT type entry program. Okay, that's going to be KKPGM and uh, PGM lang. It's going to be CMD level. Uh, sorry, level like this. Okay, so the the name of the program itself can be more than four character, but the uh, characters, but the the name of a transaction must be four character if I'm right. Kick uh, PPT uh, type entry. Um, what was it? It was a KKMSD and usage equal map. Okay, so let's do this, and then we're gonna come assemble this kick table. That's PPT, and that's one. So as you can see, assemble, link edit, and he catalog this into kick U load. That's okay. Now let's do the same. Whoops, sorry. Let's do the same for the program control table. So we're gonna edit 
kick pct one star no dollar assemble k mm, let's go at the end maybe okay so over here i2 maybe so kick pct type and three now i'm gonna give the name of the transaction now uh kkpgm is one character too long so let's choose another name kkex like this but the program gonna be uh, kkpgm let's open okay file and now we update that's pct1 like this everything's fine and at this point it should be it should work so let's start kicks uh, quiet maybe we clear now the name of the transaction was kk x so here it is okay so it used a lot of colors and it's a spreadsheet you can enter stuff and store and i guess you can load also from a file the spreadsheet and perform some action so this uh, spreadsheet is uh, transaction is described actually on the website because there is a user pdf here so that's a a manual you know for the transaction if you are interested okay so i just wanted to show uh, how to do it so let's pf1 is gonna exit completely in this case well anyway that's it okay so that's what i wanted to do it's already pretty long but i hope this is gonna be uh, useful or interesting uh, so i showed you how to install very quickly uh, a kicks from my one of my previous installation and I showed you a little bit how it is organized, you know, on the system and what you have to do to create uh, maps, uh, to create transactions, update the, the libraries or the text lib or the Mac lib and how to update the tables too. And what are the tables available? So you should look at the documentation of kicks on, uh, on the internet, the help there is on this system and so on. And it should be a, uh, relatively easy now the one problem of course is well one problem you have to remember that this is uh, the it works with c or cobol but <laughs> wait a minute it's cobol it's mvt cobol not uh, current cobol you know so if you have a transaction already written in a modern cobol you have to you know uh, port this into uh, mvt cobol and for vsam processing it used the vsam io uh, the package of J Mosley, uh, it's included in Kicks, you know, so no, you don't have to worry about that. But you have to program properly with with this. I believe that the I'm not sure for Cobol what are the, the level of if you can perform the the uh, Visam IO with uh, directly the the routines of J Mosley, of the if you can do it with some uh, macros or some. Well, copy books, you know, from uh, Kicks. I'm not sure exactly. So you would have to look at the uh, the examples. They are on the mini disk K. I uh, believe if we look at this, these are the assembled. But uh, there are some examples in Cobol over here, I believe. But uh, let me check. If I'm right, uh, it's this uh, Kick sample over here. You know. If you have kick sample maclib these are the uh, many examples uh, some of the examples out there if i'm if i'm right so you have to look also the manual of the, the kick the cms users guide to know how to extract you know members of the maclib and so on but uh, and how to manipulate a maclib but uh, you should be able to find uh, some information on how to set up a uh, cobalt transaction Okay, uh, there's also a site, I believe, by uh, a 
someone uh, from the Netherlands, I, if I remember well, it should be possible to figure it out. You know, he has explained how to do it on on MVS, but it's probably very similar on 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 CMS. Anyway, so I'm gonna stop here. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you enjoyed the video, please uh, like it and consider subscribing to the uh, channel of Moshix. Till the next time, bye-bye.